Hydrogen trains are commonly promoted by advocates for the environment who want to reduce humanity's dependence on fossil fuels and our overall emissions. However, there is some question of whether they are a good idea, and if they could actually prove a net negative to our carbon emissions on this planet, and ultimately do more harm than good. We will look at a few examples of hydrogen trains that are currently in use, and then look at why far fewer have been adopted than some climate advocates would want. Hydrogen trains work in one of two common methods, both using hydrogen as fuel. The first and most common is hydrogen fuel cells. These fuel cells generate electricity using a chemical reaction between two electrodes, a negative anode and a positive cathode. The stored hydrogen passes through the anode, where it splits up into electrons and protons. Those electrons are then forced through circuits that generate electric charge, which is then sent directly to power the train, or stored in lithium-ion batteries if extra is generated and the train has that setup. The leftover hydrogen reacts with oxygen at the cathode and creates hydrogen fuel cell's main waste product, H2O, or water. The second large technology used is converted combustion engines, although this is less preferred as it has higher emissions. They work very similar to burning petroleum, instead burning hydrogen. They are almost identical to modern natural gas internal combustion engines, and can therefore produce high quantities of nitrogen oxides in the right circumstances. This makes them more detrimental to the climate than hydrogen fuel cells, so railroads generally ignore this technology and favor the fuel cell variant. There are also major benefits to using a hydrogen-powered system rather than switching to all-electric. You would need to spend astronomical amounts of money to electrify tracks in some parts of the world. In the United States, it could cost hundreds of billions of dollars. Hydrogen trains can run on the same rails as diesel trains, making them easier to switch to. You simply need to build some hydrogen refueling stations. Thankfully, plans to retrofit existing stations to refuel trains with hydrogen are completely possible. Hydrogen is very flammable, so one must be careful while refueling the train, however experts say that is not the main problem with the switch. Petroleum products that are traditionally used to power these trains are also very flammable, so even though hydrogen is a slightly more flammable product, it is easy to use similar systems or simply tweak them to fit the new needs of hydrogen power. There are some great benefits to hydrogen fuel train sets. They are quieter, more resilient to network-wide disruption, can travel longer distances on a single tank, and of course have very limited emissions. All of those are depending on the technology used, but using the most common ones, all of those are true. So why haven't we made the switch? The largest barrier is the cost. Diesel trains are still significantly cheaper than hydrogen ones, which are the largest barriers for most rail services, which often work under very limited budgets and only replace their train sets every few decades. There is also the question of whether replacing your train sets is even a net positive for the environment. While the trains themselves would mostly emit water, the production of hydrogen itself is not a clean process. 9.3 kilograms of carbon dioxide are emitted for every kilogram of hydrogen produced, which, while less than petroleum, is still a significant amount when created at scale. Hydrogen takes a large amount of energy to create, as it is normally done through electrolysis, and that energy is often provided by the same fossil fuels that we are trying to avoid by switching to these train sets. That is a process called electrolysis. It involves an anode and a cathode separated by an electrolyte. Water reacts at the anode to form oxygen and positively charged hydrogen ions. Electrons are then passed through an external circuit, causing the charged hydrogen ions to move towards the cathode, where they combine to form hydrogen gas. There are other processes as well for this, but that is by far the most common. It is essentially just storing electrical energy, and is then converted back into that form in the engines of the hydrogen fuel cell trains. The other consideration is the speed of the switch. 
While a slow switch could be helpful to the environment, some advocates want an immediate switch. This would involve banning diesel trains entirely. This would cause massive issues as trains take lots of time, money, and emissions just to produce. This rapid switch would most likely increase emissions from the industry, as they would have to scrap old train sets and rapidly order more. The transportation of hydrogen is also a consideration. It must be moved under very high pressure, which is bulky, impractical, and heavy. This can make it a very high emission substance to move. However, despite these arguments against it, people are beginning to implement it. Germany has started using the world's first hydrogen-powered train fleet in 2022, with 14 trains on their Lower Saxony system. Germany plans to replace up to 20% of its fleet with hydrogen trains by 2035. San Bernardino is also building a small hydrogen railway, and has signed contracts to have the rail line and trains ready for operation by 2024. So, for better or for worse, hydrogen trains are coming. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, check out this video about the broader European railroad system and how its masterful construction makes it so good. Thanks for watching, please leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.